with so many questions about really hap what really happened, um, it's a real shame that the Biden administration rushed to exploit this poor little girl's situation. One of the bills being voted on today is the Ensuring Access to Abortion Act, which does ensure indiv individuals crossing state lines seeking reproductive health care or those traveling with them are protected from criminal punishment. Joining us now is one of the sponsors of that bill, Democratic Congresswoman Marilyn Strickland. Congresswoman, thank you very much for being us with us today. I understand there's a procedural vote, a pre, you know, vote before the final vote in the House, but we just saw Gabe's report on this 10-year-old girl who traveled from Ohio to Indiana to have an abortion. Now, Indiana Attorney General Todd Rokita is threatening criminal charges against the doctor. What is your reaction? Well, my reaction is this is a textbook example of why we need national legislation that protects reproductive freedom and the right to safe and legal access. And by introducing this bill, we are basically trying to protect the 14th Constitution, the 14th Amendment, which gives you the freedom to travel, interstate travel, and that includes getting access to safe and legal abortion, Andrea. Senate Republicans blocked a Democratic bill Thursday that would protect the rights of women to travel, and they wouldn't even let it come to the floor for a vote. So this is a classic situation where, you know, they use the, the implicit filibuster situation where they wouldn't let the vote be held. So that means that nothing like this is going to ever get passed by the Senate. Well, it means it won't get passed by the Senate this year. And this is why, you know, as Democrats, we are working hard to expand our Senate, expand our Senate majority. There are some seats in play that we think we can be competitive in. And perhaps we can use, you know, reconciliation or, you know, getting rid of the filibuster for spe specifically for reproductive rights as a way to make sure that women have access to safe and legal abortion, Andrea. There was a, a huge uproar over this story about the 10-year-old child. And... It was alleged in print and editorials and certainly by Jim Jordan, other members of the House, Republican members, that this was all made up and that this never happened. And we now know it did, in fact, happen. This 10-year-old girl was raped and went through the horror of that and to now, uh, under the law, require her to go through childbirth with the body of a 10-year-old, to go through nine months of carrying that rapist's baby and then go through the whole, you know, all of childbirth rather than have a, a, a quick medical procedure as, you know, unpleasant as it might be. Yeah, and now to prosecute the doctor. What, what is yeah, your reaction to all of this? Well, my reaction is that it is tragic and horrible that a 10-year-old girl had to become a national story because most of the time when we're talking about reproductive health care, that is a private decision between a woman, and in this case, sadly, a child, and her doctor or health care provider. But I think this, you know, is an example that illustrates that there are these draconian laws that are happening across the state because Roe v. Wade got overturned. And in some cases, you know, they have outlawed abortion in all cases, period. And we just want to make sure, again, that we have a national standard that allows access to reproductive health care and allows you access to safe and legal abortion. Black women and indigenous women tend to have higher maternal mortality rates. Women of color, LGBTQ plus women are disproportionately affected by having to carry children to a full term. And so as we talk about the equity of this conversation, we have to make sure that voices that are often not heard in this conversation are heard loudly and clearly. Now, some of your colleagues and Democrats around the country criticizing the president for not doing more than his executive orders. One of his executive orders is already being challenged by the Texas attorney general today. Uh, but uh, when he says his hands are tied by the decision to a great extent and by the 50-50 Senate, doesn't he have a point? Oh, he absolutely has a point. I mean, you know, the Supreme Court is, you know, one of the branches of government, and they have a majority, 6-3, and they are taking advantage of their ultra-conservative viewpoint in taking away the right for safe and legal abortion. And the president can, you know, I mean, I think what's happening right now, too, is that Democrats want to see the Democrats are fighting this, and they want to see that it is something that's important to us. And so President Biden has done what he can. We're trying to do what we can in the House, but we know that we need to expand our majority in the U.S. Senate to really make this so that we are protecting people. Congresswoman Marilyn Strickland, thanks very much for being with us today.